Hello, everyone, and welcome to Something Technical. Back here again, episode 33, I believe. Um, yeah. That's what I titled it, so hopefully it's right. But it's been, what, four or five? It's been five weeks since we last recorded. Took a little bit of a break. Much needed. I mean, we've, ta- we've recorded quite a bit this year. Um, yeah. Basically, I mean, 33, every basically every week yeah. Yeah. Uh, of this year, so... Uh, props to us, but we needed a break, and that's good. Football season started. Um, OU is 4 0, 5 0. They look nice. They look nice right now. Yeah. OSU, we won't talk too much about, about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's, ba- it's good to be back. It's been a while, so it might take a little bit to get back in the groove, but here we are. And a lot has happened. We're not going to recap everything, of course. But the big thing right now that we kind of wanted to discuss, at least start off talking about, was Elon Musk just took a visit to the border, the southern border to be exact, and is like Eagle Pass, I think is what it's called, or Eagle Trail. Yeah, Eagle Pass. Um, where a bunch of uh, immigration is happening. Uh, I think in the video that I watched, he like, did like a, not a live show, but like a 15-minute recording from the southern border and interviewed some border patrol agents and i think they were saying there's like 2500 people a day are going through eagle pass specifically um and it's a small place right too isn't it that's just one single city town whatever yeah and they're like using the trains and stuff um to to hop on and and to get into the country uh was like the big thing they said yeah but i i think we kind of want to talk a little bit more about not just like immigration I mean, that is kind of interesting. We might have some theories on that. But um, as far as, like, why is Elon Musk himself doing this? This multi-billionaire, the, arguably the richest man in the world. Um, you know, obviously that title goes back and forth. But why is he going down to the southern border concerned about this? Yeah, I, I mean, I guess we don't really know the reason. But I think we've kind of discussed it a little bit. But it feels like he does a lot of stuff with some sort of purpose behind it and I, I wonder if he, the reason he's doing this is because uh he's try, it seems like him and the new movements on twitter or x is like promote this sort of independent slash citizen journalism where essentially you know me or you or whoever goes in reports on things that are sort of underreported and it seems or i mean doesn't seem it it's definitely true that the border situation has been very underreported I mean, well, no matter what your like views on on immigration or illegal immigration, uh, it's definitely something that we we have kind of turned a blind eye to, and it really seems to be peaking right now. So, I think by going there, he could attract more attention because it's a little bit of a hot button issue, and then he could sort of showcase the uh, oh, anyone could do this, anyone could come down here and do this. You just gotta have a phone. Yeah, and you have to have X. I think you have to have X. Got to be a been, premium subscriber. <laughs> it's been yeah, he's been pushing the Twitter or X situation more of like, hey, I'm going to do this and kind of show. There's an example of what you can do. I'm a multi billionaire, and I'm just using you know my phone and X to become a reporter or a journalist. Um. Well, I guess he's a hot button person in general. He's very, even though he probably really isn't that polarizing, everyone uses him for clicks to be polarizing. Yeah. I mean, Uh, he, I think he polarizes himself too a little bit, uh, almost as a marketing ploy in some, in some ways. Uh, He seems to always want to step on the hot button issues, but I think that sort of gets the, gets attention to his companies and X is the new, is the new thing for him. So it's, how do I get as much attention? How do I get premium pe- people to pay premium on X? Because I think that's the only way you can stream, correct? Is that? Well, you can stream to like your premium subscribers, I believe. Okay. Uh, but what about posting long form videos? Can anyone do that? Or can I don't anyone... think so. I think they extended how much you could. Like, yeah. I think in the past was like two minutes and 30 seconds or something. But okay. I think now you can post a little bit longer, but to post very long, you have to be a premium subscriber. Yeah. Uh, which there's been rumor or somebody's posted that Elon wants to make the whole platform to even be on the platform. You have to pay. 
So I don't really? know about that. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I don't know if people, that will that will work very well. Have you? Uh, I know this is off topic, but it made me think of it. Have you noticed like dramatic decrease in engagement since you're not a premium subscriber, or do you even really pay attention to that? Uh, I don't pay that much attention to it. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean, my tweets are always very hit or miss, anyways. So well, mine are mostly just miss. But I, I just look at the look at the numbers of views. Like you, I have seven hundred followers, but ninety people are seeing it. Like that seems strange. So I think, I think they've manipulated the algorithm a little bit to push people to get premium. Maybe so. Yeah, I mean, I have nine hundred followers, and I have. Yeah, I got 270 views, so... Oh, so you're cooler than me. I guess. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, a lot of my stuff is, is in the hundreds, but not very high hundreds. Yeah. So, um, maybe so. I don't know. I, I never really tracked that before, at least on my personal account. So, um, on business accounts, I think I have seen a lower tick, but also we're mm. tweeting less, so... Yeah, yeah. Um. So that could be part of it. Maybe if you claim yourself to be a citizen journalist, maybe you'll get higher. It's algorithm. worth it. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. It's the same. We're citizen journalists, and we're yeah. gonna skyrocket. Uh, I guess. Okay. So, why do you think the media has been kind of ignoring the border situation? Do you think it's because um, the left or liberalism, liberal people, are don't really care, and so the current administration is like, oh, don't talk about this. I mean, it kind of seems like uh, the situation that always gets in where if one party is really gung-ho about something, the other one automatically has to be against it. And the uh, Republican Party is very gung-ho on securing the border, so the other one has to be naturally against it. And maybe that was a debate uh, before, but now it's gotten really bad, and it looks really bad for them, so I think that's why they kind of ignore it. Because it's obviously like a huge problem, uh, um, where I mean, it's it's like the whole. What did what did that video say? It was like, it's basically open for the whole world. It's not just uh, people from like Mexico. Mexico it's yeah. it's uh, all over. Yeah, countries all over. You have Mexico. You have South American countries, African countries, Middle Eastern countries are all coming through there, and it's just kind of wrong. Uh, number one, we don't. We should be vetting everyone who comes through the country. That's just a, a natural given. And number two, it's it's wrong whenever you have people trying to legally immigrate here, and it's almost impossible for them to get here. And then the others can just do it illegally, and they get in easy. And that just seems it seems so backwards to me. And we make it, we make legal immigration basically impossible, and are like, okay, whoever can come in illegally, that's perfectly fine. Uh, so it seems like there's an obvious like middle ground where we make legal immigration easier, particularly for talented people. I feel like you want to be a magnet for talented people, and we make illegal immig- we shut illegal immigration down as best we can. I mean, I'm, of course you can't shut it down 100. percent That's that's impossible, but you can definitely do a lot better than they're doing right now. Yeah, uh, I agree, and I and I Elon Musk kind of said the same thing. But I think both of us have been saying legal immigration needs to be reformed in some some manner several years ago. I had a roommate that was uh, foreign, and I had a coworker that was foreign uh, in previous company. And I didn't, you know, being born here, being in Oklahoma where immigration is not that big a deal, like, okay, people immigrate here, you know, it's kind of a thing, but it's not a hot button topic for us because yeah. we're not on the border. Mm-hmm. Well, after talking with those the uh, immigrants that I know, it's very convoluted or convoluted, very cumbersome to try to immigrate here legally. Yes, um, a lot of them try to use the uh, school system, kind of manipulate the school system to be here legally. Mm-hmm. So, like, they'll be a student come to for... a, come to a student, come be a student at one of the universities here, and then you get a student visa. And then when you graduate, so like you have a student visa as long as you're in school. And then after, I think it's two years after you graduate, um, 
you have to find a job in the field that you graduate with. And I think it's fine within six months of after graduating. If you don't find one, you have you're here illegally after six months. Um, if you do find a job, the job has to sponsor you and like help fill out paperwork and stuff. That's expensive too. I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah. And so like, it's just a hassle. Yep. Um, and then you're only good for like two years. And then after that you have to renew. Um, mm-hmm. and then this whole time you're waiting to hit the lottery as, as they call it. Um, because you have to be selected to be, if you're from, uh, one of my coworkers from India and the other one's from like Eastern Europe or Western Europe, Northern Europe, anyways, Eastern, Eastern uh, Europe. Eastern Europe. And so, like, you have to hit the lottery to be, okay, only from this this country, we're only accepting this many people to be legally, to be here legally. And then, okay, well, you didn't hit it. You didn't hit the lottery, so you got to wait another year or whatever or wait for X amount of time. And then it's just, it's like, just horrible. It's horrible. It yeah. needs to be refined. Yeah. Um, Who, why would the country not want to attract the best talent in the world? Or even, I mean... People with degrees, people who are going to be productive citizens, it seems like a complete loss that we've that we've sort of just thrown this off the side. I mean, there's so many people who do their PhD here or postdocs who basically what a postdoc is is like you do your PhD and then you continue on in a different lab and sort of do a, another glorified PhD in a way in a sim- simplistic terms. <laughs> uh, they come from foreign countries and they want to stay here that they can't because they, they uh, the system just doesn't work, doesn't work that way. So it seems insane to, to push, to send, to train these people and then send them out back to their own country when they could be very productive individuals for our own country. It's just not fair that, uh, that, you know, you have people who just can come through illegally. And on a, on a second note, another reason, um, I guess sort of case against the illegal immigration is number the the numbers do matter. We're not just like a we're not a charity case. The country is not a charity case for for the world. I know how tough that is for some people to hear. That's just not how you you run a system <laughs> or run a functioning functioning government uh, state. Country, yeah. Yeah. So. yeah, I mean, I, and I wonder if it's like the the left side or the side against or side for illegal immigration, open borders, I guess you could say if they're kind of for it because they see, Oh, we have a bunch of jobs and people are going to have to do these jobs, but okay. The people in the United States don't want to do these jobs. Do we just let illegal immigration in because it's too hard to reform. So we just let them in and they can work these jobs. And then we kind of just deal with the issues of crime. Um, I mean, other countries in Europe had open borders uh, and it has backfired quite a bit as far as the amount of crime. Just statistically, for X amount of hundred or thousand people, you know, you're going to your crime rate's going to go up X amount percent. I don't know yeah. the actual numbers. Yeah. But like it just not everyone's perfect and not everybody's rainbows and sunshines. So when they come here, they're going to bring some baggage with them. Yeah. And I mean, honestly, if you're just going by pure statistics you're selecting for people who have already done something illegal are probably more likely to do something illegal <laughs> so it's kind of even to me that just seems like obvious uh yeah they've like already broken the law that, yeah <laughs> they obviously don't really care so. yeah uh, which doesn't mean all of them are i mean you see plenty of families who are just trying to make, get get a better life but there's plenty of you know when statistically they're going to be poor like yeah that's one of the reasons why they're coming here to America and, is, and you know, if, if, uh, you know, some of the most strict immigration countries are the, the sort of Northern European, those like model, uh, sort of liberal models of, of success. Cause they're like the happiest countries or whatever, cause they have great social services. Well, they also have some of the most strict, uh, immigration policies. And I'm not saying that's why they're so great, but it's why they're able to offer the services that they're able to, they do offer their society because you can't, you know, have a bunch of unproductive members come in and uh, it basically waters down the tax, the tax base. (laughs) Yeah. There's, there's definitely like logical reasons for, you know, any more uh, left wing, left wing version against just unlimited illegal immigration. (laughs) Yeah. And I don't think, being for illegal immigration, there's really a lot to stand on. 
uh, as far as their as far as the argument. Um, I mean, I would, you know, if we could help everybody, we could obviously, but, um, you know, what if we really needed to, then like, okay, we'll just take over Mexico and, you know, everybody's a United States citizen then. But like, obviously we didn't do that. Yeah. That would, you know, there would be a lot of people that would be dying in that. It would be, I mean, yeah, that, that would be terrible. And that's, that's, I don't really know 100% where I was going to go with that, but but basically, when you want to offer a select amount of, or you want social security, you want uh, sort of uh, healthcare services, it's just impossible to provide it to an ever increasing number of individuals. You have to keep the keep the spout, you know, trickling. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, even like if you think about it, like insurance wise. The healthy people pay for the sick people. And so you always want more help, you know, as an insurance company, you want more healthy people uh, that are putting in more money than sick people. Well, kind of a little bit, maybe this is insensitive, but like, okay, if you're bringing in more poor people into your social services, okay, naturally they're going to be using more than they're putting in. And so then it, obviously, like you said, waters it down. Yes. And I don't know why it's so like taboo to say, say that thing, because it's just true. I mean, it, in general no, math who, does not work <laughs> yeah yes <laughs> it's kind of like you know the the whole debate around um social security itself where there's less and less pe- kids being babies being born so there's less tax base to cover future social security and if it's which maybe that is a reason they're trying to bring more immigration in but it, again if you don't have if it's more poor people poor uh, families that are are coming into the country then they're not going to be providing that tax base but yeah it's just all all around if you want to have good civil services you need a great tax base and you need a not a huge amount of people that are are you need a huge amount of people that are inputting that way you can output to sort of a lesser amount yeah um yeah like so the math just doesn't work out if you have too many people pulling and not enough people putting in mm-hmm. um that's a better way to put it. yeah Okay, so back to like Elon Musk and the citizen journalism. So do you know, like what kind of citizen citizen journalist do you know, I guess? I know, we talked beforehand about Andy No. He was big in what, Portland, I think it was? Yeah, especially um, like during 2020. Yeah, during a lot of the riots and uh, mostly peaceful protests. Uh, and then there's some other ones... I. Andy knows kind of been all over the place. I think uh, a lot of people just send him videos now. Yeah. He's not necessarily like he still records himself. He still goes out into the street and is recording um, video journalism uh, of different things that are happening. But I think a bunch of people send him videos now for other cities because I don't think he's traveling all over the United States um, every night, you know, going to different because he's been posting a lot of stuff about Philadelphia. Philadelphia has absolutely gone downward as far as like the riots and stuff downtown um still going on the bunch of looting um and i think it was like walmart or target uh posted their closing like 60 stores or something like what? something like that in like inner cities yeah i'll see if what? i can find that stat but i mean the, the, it's got to stop at some point yeah it's been i mean it, i don't know this the whole thing i mean the whole like grocery slash store system relies on a you know a degree of trust and punishment for theft otherwise it completely falls apart you i mean obviously no store can stay in business if people are just constantly stealing from it and then it raises the price if if it does stay in business it raises the prices on everyone else it's like a completely unsustainable yeah let's see okay target closes select stores to prioritize team member and guest safety. Um, and, okay, so the argument against, like, well, it's just insurance will pay for it. They don't really care. Okay, well, it happens once. Okay, you know, the insurance pays out. It happens twice. Okay, hey, we're going to start raising your rate. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is an actually yeah. unsafe location. You yeah. chose this place. Um, yeah. <laughs> so one in, in uh, New York City. uh Three in Seattle, 
one, two, three, three in San Francisco, two, three, three or four in Portland. So like what, 12 stores <laughs> are yeah. closing due to specifically because of team member safety because of the looting. Um, That's also jobs lost. That that just really sucks. Uh, and Target actually pays decent. You know, yeah, they're not, they're not terrible. They're not seven twenty five or whatever seven twenty. Um, but it it only hurts yourself. Like you shouldn't uh, you shouldn't loot the stores in your own city. Like you should go to a different city and loot. <laughs> I mean, obviously you shouldn't loot at all. But like, okay, I'm gonna loot this store. Okay, well now it shuts down. Now I, one, I can't loot it anymore, and two, now I don't have access to any goods that I need to get. Uh, so you're <laughs> kind of like, like just hurting yourself. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a society relies on a certain degree of trust and punishment for crimes. That's how it functions. It's, I don't know why we don't punish, or in this, some of these cities aren't punishing crimes. I mean, what is it in San Francisco? We kind of talked about this before. It was uh, with the police, San, yeah, San Francisco, or people just break into cars all the time and steal stuff. It's like broad daylight, but it's like, oh, we're not going to prosecute this because it's not a big deal. But then everyone just does it. And it's like, how do you function in a city like that? You can't trust anyone. Like Trust is probably the most important part of a community. It must have been even eventually up into the, the city and finally state. And then you're trusting your institutions. And that's like your sort of fabric that holds the society together. And when you don't even have it at the local level, how can you ever expect it to happen at the the highest level possible? Yeah. And I mean, people are just going to get hurt. I mean, no. you're going to loot places and pe like people are tired of it. What was it? A couple weeks ago, there was the, the guy that robbed a convenience store like eight weeks in a row, like for eight weeks. He's just going in, just like taking stuff and leaving and eventually the like cashiers because i think it was locally owned the cashiers like held them down and just beat the crap out of them oh yeah the like, uh sick the i don't know how you pronounce that i think it's just sick uh guys with the, the turban uh, yeah yeah uh and they just like beat them up and like people are just gonna get tired of it and people are gonna get hurt uh, on both sides whether you're getting looted or looting like people are just gonna get hurt and, you know, maybe it's, that's what's going to take is some uh, Texas justice, is that what they call it? Where you stand up like you stand up for yourself. Yeah. Which also reminds me. No, it's seek, not seek. Sick. Seek. Okay. Seek. Um, kind of off topic, but a little on topic. Uh, this YouTuber, young YouTuber, like 20 years old or something like that. They... Uh, they were pranking somebody in this mall in Texas and like messing oh, with this guy. Yeah. And the guy was like, leave me alone, leave me alone, leave me alone, leave me alone. And started to walk away and they kept messing with him. And he just turned around and shot him once and just walked off. <laughs> and, and then he get, he get off. Uh, they're talking about that of like, well, it's, is it self-defense? And the jury is, is the rumor or this article that I read said that he was, that they were leaning towards self-defense in that case. I, I thought it was done like yesterday. Oh, maybe it was. Uh, maybe it's a different case that he got off with self-defense. Yeah, and the, the YouTuber was like, well, I'm going to keep doing it. And I'm like, okay, well. Okay. <laughs> he probably was like, oh, this made me go viral. This is perfect. Yeah. This Please shoot me it. again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, like, I don't know. I don't – when you take gun safety – class, or, say, gun safety. When you take, like, concealed carry classes and stuff, they talk about how it has to be – you have to feel like your life, life is in danger. Yeah. Or, I don't or look like that guy's bodily life is in danger. No. So I don't know. It could be groundbreaking in that in that regards. I, I hate to also go off on the uh, another tangent. Yeah. Another tangent related to this, but but like how unbearable is it now? I haven't actually been, but I heard that it just sucks to go to malls now because all these kids are like trying to make TikToks and they'll like go up to you and be like, Oh, look, let's uh, look at your girlfriend's phone or or oh mm. do some stupid dance <laughs> it's, like, it's like now malls are even more dystopian than they were before because of tiktok and yeah, no one's gonna go to malls anymore and you're just gonna, it's just gonna be teens cranking <laughs> each other yeah in the food court um <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know i haven't experienced that 
I don't know how I would react. I I could definitely see myself going like along with it. Stupid, yeah. I could definitely see myself going along with it, and then I could also be like, okay, I'm in an upset mood. Like I'm not dealing with this. <laughs> so I don't know. We'll see how it goes. If that I do something stupid. Yeah, I mean, you know, make sure you shout out your at when you do something stupid. So when it goes, you're right. Viral. So you can get some views. <laughs> Ah, simply technical. No. <laughs> um, yeah. So maybe those are citizen journals. Journal. That's citizen journals. Prank, 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 pranking each other. <laughs> um. So, uh, was there another? What was the other citizen journalist that you mentioned oh, before? There's. I mean, there's a lot. Like, there's Barry Weiss has been writing a bunch. Um, who else? Uh, Matt Taibbi. I'm not really as familiar with him. Uh, he was doing a lot of, but at the beginning, actually, this is how you know that the whole Elon's plot about her idea about citizen journalism is is definitely something they're pushing. It's because he gave like the Twitter files to Barry Weiss to report them. He gave them to Matt Taibbi to report them, and then there's one other one that's that's bigger. Um, but yeah, I think the whole citizen journalism movement is like just a natural process that happens whenever you have these new social media platforms where people can make a lot more money uh, splitting off from, you know, New York times or Washington post or smaller, smaller newspaper slash media mm -hmm. site by just going solo and taking subscribers or even is it Pat Patreon is like the site where they can just mm -hmm. donate to you. Uh, and I think a lot of people have had a, quite a bit of success through that. And I think what, what the goal of Twitter is to now become this site where people, where citizen journalism is con like more video based citizen journalism is, is taking place. Yeah. And well, do you think it, you say it's natural progression? Mm -hmm. I, I kind of think of it as, as people become more as the media mainstream media, I guess you could say, you know, the Fox News CNN as they kind of polarize more, and even go farther away from their own base that I think this citizen journalism stuff is natural, is the natural progression, especially when you can see that they're being objective. Cause I mean, I think a lot of, I think most people, when you watch the news, yeah, it's nice to hear what you want to hear. I, we've talked about those chants before, but I would rather know the truth than to be patronized by some media outlet. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm a weirdo. Now, granted, I don't want to always hear things that I don't want to hear. I mean, I would like to hear good things. But hearing somebody being objective, I think, is is vital to news outlets. Yeah. No, and, and or objective or even openly subjective is also important. <laughs> you know, whenever uh, objective is probably the more the more important, most important one. But I think openly subjective is also very important and underrated because uh, whenever you you know let your biases be you know. known, that's that helps quite a bit. With uh, I mean, I guess the majority of the everyone knows the biases of the big three mainstream media companies, but they still never say it. <laughs> they don't ever say that that we are leading this way, we're leading that way. Uh, so it's nice to hear, you know. I don't know, like a, a Barry Weiss or someone say that she's definitely liberal, but it's just report is going to report on this, but she has this point of view because we all have points of view on any, you know, subject, whatever way we approach it. Uh, it's impossible to be completely. Yeah, exactly. Subjective. Exactly. So it's nice to see what way you're, what way these people are approaching the problem that they're talking about. Yeah. And I think it's important, like, a lot of times when I talk politics to people, I try to, hey, well, just let you know, I'm libertarian. It's like you might have a different view than I do, but this is the way that I see it. Um, you know, I'm, I'll am i say at work, like, yeah, it's government work. You know, I'm libertarian, so <laughs> I hate that this is so slow um, and so inefficient. But, like, some of you might like that. You know, some of you, I love it inefficient. I get paid to just sit here. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, maximum efficiency only yeah. so i don't know i think it's important to know understand bias and i think that's a very learned skill for people yeah it's identifying okay you said it this way is that because you're biased or because that's the way it actually is 
and I think investigating that or asking questions to, I mean, obviously if you're just upfront, Oh, are you saying that because you're liberal or you're conservative? You know, that's not the right way to do it, but to like, yeah. Oh, they said that because they're a boomer, old boomer um, yeah. kind of thing. I think that's a very learned skill and is very important to learn if you're going to navigate any type of political spectrum. Yeah. Or I mean, any, anything nowadays, it's everything. All news is basically some form of political news these days. Yeah. The, uh, I, I respect Andy Noah a lot because he's been very much in it. I mean, he was like walking the streets with the protesters and stuff and posting videos and, and then reporting on stuff. So hmm. I respect that. That's very difficult. Um, but I do think that's the natural progression is okay. Because I mean, even Tucker Carlson going, you know, going a wall, I guess you could say, uh, away from Fox News. That that's the natural progression. Okay, well, I care more about Tucker Carlson than I do about Fox News now. You know, that's an example. I'm not saying yeah. that. Yeah. Um, I don't been, really. I think a lot right. of people said that. I mean, I guess I don't see the numbers though, so we don't necessarily know. But it like Tucker like Carlson, when he interviewed, was it Andrew Tate had like eight million views in the first couple of hours or something. Like I'm always skeptical crazy. of those uh, uh, Twitter views, though, you know, because because they they literally just show it if you like looked at or passed by it on your timeline. Because mm. it starts with people or yeah. like it starts when you walk through on your timeline. Yep. Uh, let's see. Bill O'Reilly interview, 20.7 million. It's only 50 minutes long. I say only. That's long, yeah. I guess, for some people. Um, Russell Brand, kind of another, uh, just like Tucker Carlson, but reporting on news, which is kind of crazy because I think that guy kind of is crazy, like a little wild. He does seem like a complete nut. And didn't he get like accused of a bunch of stuff recently? Probably. Sexual harassment, like rape, I think, like by oh, a lot is. of people. Uh, I actually, I actually wonder, I kind of believe this conspiracy I saw about him. I've ne actually never listened to a single thing he said, uh, just full disclosure. So I don't know much about him at all. Uh, but I saw someone that was like, pretty sure Russell Brand. Uh, so at least what I do know is that he had a, you know, a Hollywood persona. And then he sort of like came out of the scene, what, a year or two years ago? Maybe if in this like uh, sort of podcast. I mean, he's been an actor. Yeah. He's, yeah, he's been an actor, but he like basically came out as, I guess, conservative in a way, which was weird because nothing, you know, just by looking at him, nothing about him, you know, screams conservative to, to anyone. Uh, but I saw a conspiracy that was like, Pretty sure Russell Brand has just been getting crazier and crazier on his podcast, knowing that these allegations are going to come out. That way, he could accuse like of it being a all of it for being a conspiracy. Seems like a, a legitimate uh, strategy, actually. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, even his, when he's in movies and stuff, he kind of is a little crazy. So, yeah, uh, yeah, I don't know. I haven't really paid attention to his podcast, but I know that he's been doing it for at least a couple of years now. Yeah. Um, what do you think? I don't know. We didn't talk about this beforehand, but I kind of added this in. Uh, speaking of journalism, the Dave Portnoy stuff. Uh, are you familiar with it at all, or should I go over the situation? I'm not super familiar with it. I mean, I I kind of know the background, but it'd be better if you went over it. So Dave Portnoy, obviously Barstool Sports or Barstool uh, Journalism, built up this brand, sold it. They didn't want it anymore, so he bought it back. <laughs> and then he sold it to somebody else a couple years later and then bought it back again for like a dollar or something. So made like a ton of money on the sales sell of his company. Uh, but he does his own kind of personal branding as well for himself. And one of those things is he's on Instagram and he goes around to different cities and he will try all the pizza shops, all the authentic, uh, authentic pizza shops. So like thin crust pizza and he goes with the yeah. one, one bite club or something like the one bite show. Uh, I'm probably butchering that. So if you're a big Dave Portnoy fan, sorry. Um, but anyways, he has a show where he takes one bite. He's like, everybody knows rules, takes a bite. 
and then he takes an he takes takes a bite of the pizza and then takes a bite of the crust and then gives a rating. And he's very honest that he's biased because they're small businesses. Um, he's biased of like, hey, it's a small business, so like I don't give anybody below like a six point I don't I don't know the exact scale. Yeah. I don't give anybody below a six point Um. So he he he's biased and he's upfront about it. Well, a lot of these pizza shops they make a ton of money because he's got a huge following. So he's like kind of not saving their business, not like they need saving, but he's boosting them up. Of like, yeah. Oh, Dave Portnoy went here and said the pizza was a was a seven point five. Like that must be pretty <laughs> good, you know? So yeah. A lot of people will go and try it, and then they'll leave reviews of like, oh, I was I watched it on Dave Portnoy's show or his his Instagram feed. And he's gone viral several times because he'll be in the inner cities and sometimes some some weirdos will come by and say something. <laughs> like he had this guy, uh, I don't think he had any arms. Like he just had like he had just sleeves and he was carrying a suitcase on a string. And so like it was just like a crazy thing that happened <laughs> in the video. And so anyways, it, there's just some like very viral moments and funny moments. Not necessarily that's funny, that's kind of sad, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> some very funny moments that happened and there was a recent one where this guy came out and basically like cursed them out because he's like how can you judge an establishment based on one bite and if you actually watch the show you know that like if it's good pizza he will eat like a whole slice yeah um, or at least take several bites so it's not necessarily like a one bite thing uh, he calls it that but he does more um and so the guy came out and like was yelling at him and stuff and that went viral uh and so the guys like reviews tanked and stuff and some people like applauded him because they hate dave portnoy but uh so that kind of happened recently well then dave portnoy is raising like raised 50 million dollars i think for small businesses um and is like distributing it out to people so then uh he's hosting this like one bite pizza festival i guess you would say uh and so like a bunch of businesses are going a bunch of small businesses and is it wopo is that what it's called washington, washington post? post one of the news facilities that starts with washington um I'm pretty sure it's the, washington post Wapo. uh they and this happens to dave before happened to Dave before but they are writing this hit piece about him and the lady that was writing the piece called a bunch of the sponsors for his festival and said, Hey, you know about these uh, comments that Dave made like several years ago and like kind of like try to get, trying to cancel personally cancel Dave Portnoy uh, over these like things he said several years ago. And they're like, you know, does a sponsor really want to be sponsoring somebody that said these kind of comments? <laughs> what, what are your comments on that? What do you have to say? And like, we're, we're writing this article about this and they're like, no comment. And they're like, well, are you going to pull your sponsorship? And like, uh, no, but we'll talk to Dave. They call Dave. So Dave oh, calls the gosh. Washington Post and is like calls the specific um, person, the lady writing the article, the specific journalist, and says, hey, what, what the heck's going on here? You can't be doing this. Can't, um, were you going to ask me about my comments on it? And they're like, yeah, we're, let's, we wanted to schedule something. <laughs> and so he's like calling her out on stuff. And then... She's like, well, we'll schedule for tomorrow. Schedule for tomorrow. I'm always a very honest journalist. That's how I'm just trying to get a reaction from the sponsors. And so I can write it in my article and it'd be a big deal. He said, okay, well, you should probably talk to me before you release this hit article. Uh, let's schedule. Uh, he said, okay, how about tomorrow morning? They said, okay. They, so she, 15 minutes, I think they said, or 10 minutes before his phone call with this reporter the, the next morning. She moves it to like three o'clock in the afternoon, and then he says, "Well, I can't make that." And then they release the article at noon. My so gosh. like not even asking him for his rebuttal or anything. They yeah. just like just so scummy. Did they lose? Did they end up losing sponsors, or do they? The sponsors Are you talking about Dave Portnoy? Yeah. Oh no, they love Dave. Like he's helping them raise money, and that's huge brand yeah. awareness. So like yeah. they don't. I mean, not that they don't care. I mean, they obviously care about that, but he's the positives far away the negatives in that in those cases yeah. yeah um so it's just like no wonder we're like going with individuals right yes because of how scummy how scummy some of these people are that work for these companies yeah it as seems far like as like the washington post yeah it seems like it's almost a 
So I'm trying to just have a person. Can you see me? Yeah, there you go. I can see you. Super blurry, but yeah. Uh, I heard Uh, you, whatever you said 10 seconds ago, but. I basically said that it seems like it's almost like a badge of honor now to see who could take down the biggest fish. And I don't know a lot about Dave Portland, but this is not the first time. I know that at least that someone has been trying to take him down. So that's not really journalism to me to try to, you know, cancel somebody, cancel someone or take someone down. It's, it's journalism to report on something. And, and that's what you do. You report on, things that are underreported or unseen by the public. Things that need to be brought to light. And obviously yeah. people have written about that kind of stuff about him for a while. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing of like, I'm not the biggest Dave Portnoy fan. I, I don't, I mean, I don't really have anything against him. I mean, he's definitely had his allegations and stuff. Um, I think he even had like a sex tape or something release. Uh, he's definitely not straight away from uh, controversy, but <laughs> no. that's also what's made him, kind of famous is like yeah he's not afraid to say a bunch of things um so it's it's interesting i think he's done a lot for like small business Mm -hmm. and i mean i guess he really likes pizza i guess that's not something you're super interested in so (laughs) (laughs) he doesn't like pizza if you're you're it's true it's true i turned down the pizza place yesterday (laughs) um but yeah, so I think, I mean, he probably shouldn't say some of those things he did several years ago, but there's, everybody has stuff like that. Several years ago, it doesn't matter anymore. If it's not, hurt, not, if it's not actively harming someone right now, then it doesn't matter. Like, well, it's not harming anyone until the journalists bring it back up. Like, yeah. And still not even harming anyone or unless yeah, you decide really to. Yeah. I guess I, have no, like, I have, down. literally have no idea what he said, but I don't really know either. <laughs> And it obviously hasn't been that big a deal, or I would have heard yeah. about it. Um, yeah. But to do some type of scummy journalism like that and not let... I mean, imagine if I was writing an article about you and about all the bad things you did, and you didn't. I didn't give you an opportunity to, to comment on it at all. <laughs> no. Or yeah. I tried to schedule something with you, and we had a time, and then I said, ah, never mind, let's do it later, and then release the article anyways. Like that. That's pretty crazy. Um, and then he caught her in it, and she just denied it, and then did exactly what he said she was going to do. So, yeah. Um, any more to talk about with this, with uh, Dave Portnoy or journalism? Not really. No. What about you? No, I mean, I kind of aired out a lot of my grievances, I guess you could say. Yeah. Uh, I think, yeah, I guess my kind of hot topic is, is or hot uh, take. I think Elon Musk is going to push more citizen journalism and I think people are going to embrace it a lot more. I think, and even it's hard to have a platform for them. Obviously, like X or Twitter or social media is the easiest place, but it's not like something you're going to go watch. Like, they're not going to have their own show, right? How do you going get over. paid for it? Yeah. yeah. I mean, the X is really the only way, or YouTube, I guess, if you made some type of YouTube, but like, if it's too controversial, YouTube will just flag you or take it down. So, mm, yeah. Uh, so X is really the only place that's going to be like, oh, you reported on something I don't like? That's fine. Interesting. Yeah. So you think it'll be successful in... Do you think uh, an extra hot take, do you think they'll go all subscribers only on on X? Or that's... I don't think so. Okay. Good, good. Me too. I, because from like a business standpoint, you want to make it easier for people to get on your app and to yeah okay so everybody pays five dollars okay now you lose a quarter or you probably get down to a quarter of what you're at now okay those people are paying five dollars um okay well now you just lost a bunch of advertising revenue because now you have a quarter of what you were promising people or promising advertisers it's like do those equal out i don't know it's just harder to grow something like that when it's paid yeah but yeah, I mean, I, if you're I, not if you're not paying for something, then you're the product. So like, yeah, I'm the product right now. So 
Yeah. So you're the product. Thanks for watching our YouTube or uh, <laughs> our YouTube channel and podcast because <laughs> it's free. Um. So yeah, that's kind of my take on that. Do you have any takes? No, I, I actually anything? basically agree with that, I'm, or completely agree with that. I guess. Yeah. Just paywalls. I mean, even video games have kind of found out. Oh, well, if we get yeah ten times as many people on and make it free, hey, microtransactions. We can get microtransactions. You know. Yep. And the microtransactions for Twitter or whatever are ads. So yep. um, you take away from that when you pay. But if you don't have anything else, then uh, I'll sign us off. All right. Nope. This has been Something Technical. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll catch you next time.